On 26 April 1986, a terrible accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant changed the lives of millions of people forever. The explosion at Unit 4 sent clouds of radioactive dust into the atmosphere, contaminating large areas of Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. More than 600,000 people, known as liquidators, were involved in fighting the disaster. Helicopter pilots dropped sand, boric acid, and lead on the reactor to reduce radiation emissions and shut down the reactor. Radiation levels above the reactor were thousands of times higher than permitted. Helicopter pilots received lethal doses of radiation. Soldiers and rescuers, wearing heavy protective suits, manually removed graphite and radioactive debris from the roof of the building, working in terrible conditions. They had to climb onto the roof, drop two or three shovels of radioactive debris in 40 seconds, and get back down in time. These people risked their lives to save the world from an even greater catastrophe. In all, some 60,000 people died from radiation exposure and the Chernobyl exclusion zone is still uninhabitable. The Chernobyl disaster caused significant health problems for people living in the contaminated areas, as well as for the liquidators. Thousands of people died from radiation exposure and many others suffer from cancer and other diseases. Thirty-six years have passed since that terrible day when the Chernobyl nuclear accident shook the world. The disaster at the fourth nuclear reactor changed the lives of the people living in the 30-kilometer exclusion zone forever. Their villages, once full of life, have been transformed into ghosts of the past, where silence reigns and wild animals are gradually taking over the areas left behind by man. What is Chernobyl hiding from us? What do the abandoned villages of the Chernobyl zone look like today turned into ghosts of the past? We invite you to a virtual journey through the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Together, we will visit abandoned ghost villages, deserted buildings, and empty streets. We will see how nature is absorbing what man once created. Today, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is one of the most dangerous and mysterious places on Earth. It is a huge living organism, like an old damaged clock, whose hands stopped on 26 April 1986. Its hands froze, marking the moment of a terrible catastrophe. This is a place where time loses its power. Here, Past, present, and future intertwine, revealing the fragility of human life and the majesty of nature. Here, among the empty houses and rusty cars, there is an eerie silence that heralds danger. This is a place where life has come to an abrupt end, leaving behind only the ghosts of the past. What does the future hold for the Chernobyl exclusion zone? Will people return here? This question remains unanswered. Scientists say it will be impossible to completely cleanse the zone of radiation 
as radionuclides decay over thousands of years. Before the Chernobyl accident, there were 116 settlements in the 30-kilometer exclusion zone. But on the 26th of April, 1,986, life in the villages of the Chernobyl zone came to a standstill. People in the area of the great tragedy were forced to leave their homes in a hurry, leaving everything behind, their belongings, animals, livestock, their history and memories. They were promised it would only be for two or three days, but no one knew that this separation from their homeland would be forever. Today, a trip to the abandoned villages of the Chernobyl zone is a journey back in time. You can see empty houses where life used to be in full swing, abandoned farms and collective barns. Time and radiation have done their work. Houses are collapsing, trees are growing through the roofs, and weeds hide the traces of human life. In one day, about 10,000 people were evacuated from 15 villages within the 10-kilometer exclusion zone. On average, it took four to eight hours to evacuate a village. As new data on the radiation situation in areas far from Chernobyl became available, it became clear that the population of the 30-kilometer zone also needed to be evacuated. From three to seven May, people left 43 more settlements, including the town of Chernobyl. The evacuation was organized and rapid. Thanks to the precise actions and selfless work of rescuers, doctors, drivers, and other specialists, it was possible to get people out of the danger zone in a short time. The evacuation of people from the 30-kilometer exclusion zone was one of the largest humanitarian operations in human history. It saved the lives of people who could have died from radiation exposure. These villages will never be the same. Their stories and secrets will remain forever in the shadows of abandoned houses, overgrown with wild plants. Over the past three decades, the radiation situation in the Chernobyl exclusion zone has improved significantly. Exposure levels have fallen by hundreds and even thousands of times. This reduction isn't only due to the natural radioactive decay of radionuclides, rainfall and the biological activity of plants and other living organisms have played a crucial role. These processes have caused radionuclides to migrate deeper into the soil, typically to depths of between 5 and 20 centimeters. This top layer of soil now acts as a natural shield effectively reducing radiation exposure at the surface. The wildlife of the Chernobyl exclusion zone has flourished in the areas abandoned by humans. This unique corner of the planet has become a haven for many species of animals that thrive in this exceptional ecosystem.
the abandoned settlements of the exclusion zone have become a real paradise for wildlife. Near one of these farms, you can clearly see the paths trodden by animals. These trails lead to an old building where mineral fertilizers were stored before the accident. This wall is a good example of the importance of abandoned buildings for wildlife in the Chernobyl zone. As you can see, some of the masonry on this side has been licked out. You can see where the animals reach, how they feed comfortably. They come in here and lick this part of the brickwork here. And here you can see that the clay plaster has already been removed from the lower part and licked literally down to the wooden base. This is where we recorded deer and hares coming in and consuming minerals. So we decided to build this chamber. To get a glimpse of this mysterious world, we were able to record the life of wild animals in their natural environment without human intervention. To look behind the scenes of this mysterious world, we decided to install hidden cameras. We were able to capture the life of wild animals in their natural environment without human interference. Observing wildlife in the Chernobyl zone allows scientists to learn more about how animals adapt to extreme conditions and to assess the impact of radiation on flora and fauna. Some buildings in the exclusion zone attract wildlife. To investigate the reasons for this behavior, we use camera traps set up near the buildings most frequently visited by wildlife. Here we are near an abandoned barn, which, as we can see from the tracks, is most frequently visited by hoofed animals. And we can see that they came tonight after yesterday's rain. Using camera traps, we have established that animals such as moose, red deer and hares come to this structure. They lick the walls and feed on the minerals left in the mortar and other elements of the structure, including the clay plaster used on the walls of this building. The absence of people has given a boost to wildlife. Animals and birds that once feared human, presence have returned. Moose, wild boar, wolves, foxes, beavers, they all roam freely in the abandoned streets and even lynx can be found in the woods. This is a place where human tragedy and wildlife have combined to create a new, terrible, and majestic existence. The Chernobyl zone is not only a monument to tragedy, but also a symbol of nature's resilience. Despite the danger of radiation, animals have returned here to live. In this radioactive capsule frozen in time, It is a symbol of resilience and hope. It is a hope that life can go on even in the most terrible conditions. It is a belief that nature can recover even after being wounded by human folly. <laughs>